to look at the role Venezuela will play at the Summit of the Americas. We're joined by Robert Valencia. He's a contributing writer who focuses on Latin America for the online publication Global Voices. Robert, good to have you with us. Thank you very much. 26 former heads of state in Latin America, two former uh, prime ministers of Spain, got together to issue the declaration this week calling for an end on human rights violations in Cuba. But current leaders, very silent. Is this all the politics of oil that David was referring to? Uh, people are just, he, Venezuela has bought off these leaders? Well, there's a complicit silence, basically. That's what the argument is, has been for many, for many months. We had former presidents uh, from Latin America. We had uh, Andres Pastrana from Colombia, Sebastián Piñera from Chile, uh, Felipe Calderón from Mexico, and Enrique Cardoso from Brazil, and also um, Felipe González from Spain. And the argument... And not all were conservatives. Felipe González is a socialist. Correct. So the argument here is that basically Venezuela is Latin American's lone wolf. Um, we've, we've seen earlier this year that Maduro tried to garner some money from China, from Russia, and basically he came back empty-handed, even though both uh, his administration and, and Telesur touted as a wonderful and successful trip. Right, and he's doing this because Venezuela's economy is a basket case. It has the world's worst inflation. You've got severe shortages of goods that have led to rationing, uh, The world's uh, one of the world's worst homicide rates. And this is in a country that, despite the fact that oil prices have come down, has the largest oil reserves in the world. And so he tends to blame the United States for every everything. Is, is anybody buying that? Well, it, I, I would say that the people, I mean, people inside Venezuela is buying it. I think the fact that... But, but fewer and fewer, because his poll numbers are terrible. Correct. But he has a very powerful platform. He owns practically every, uh, you know, media yeah. outlet in Venezuela. I mean, we, we've seen the sanctions that the United States imposed on seven Venezuelan officials, and Venezuela is using that... Uh, you know, as a plan so to did, say, you know, the United States is once and to invade. did the U.S. make a strategic mistake by issuing those sanctions just a few weeks before this summit of the Americas, especially with that language about Venezuela being a national security threat to the United States, right. something that the White House has since walked back? Correct. I, I think uh, that's a yes and no answer. I think, yes, they, they, uh, the Obama administration imposed sanctions on seven officials. This doesn't mean that he's imposing sanctions on Venezuela or the 23 or so million Venezuelans that live within that country. But Maduro is saying, you are imposing sanctions on the country, and that's how basically he turned that around in his favor, is to say, we, I'm the only thing that you have, I'm the one protecting you. And that's the, that, that has been the rhetoric for, 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 for months. And as David Arriosa said, Venezuela is going to play an important role at the Summit of the Americas because of its close relationship with Cuba. It has subsidized Cuba with oil for many, many years. So it will play that important role. And one thing we learned this week is that a high-level State Department official, a high-level counselor to State, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry, was in Venezuela this week with high-level talks. What's going on? Well, let me add one more thing. Just a couple of minutes ago, we heard that the State Department recommended the administration to remove Cuba from the list of terrorist countries. The reason why they're doing this is because they can see this coming, that uh, they, you know, the fact that they have, uh, you know, eroded relationships with Venezuela can actually trump any progress with Cuba for the same reason that you just pointed out. Venezuela and Cuba are very close together ever since Chavez took power in 1998, you know, on behalf of the Bolivarian Revolution. And as we just heard, they were beneficiaries of Petro Caribe, which is basically in tatters right now. But what about the U.S. relations, this U.S. official going to Venezuela? Do you think we're trying to remedy things? They can try. I mean, I think uh, this is, uh, and, and, and this is something that I always argue uh, elsewhere. I say the United States has taken the first step, but I don't think they should go it alone. I think all of the members of OAS should, you know, be in unison and, and really point something to Venezuela, say, this, you are in a, in a dip, uh, situation, a difficult situation, that needs to be resolved as soon as possible. But the Organization of American States has been very silent. Uh, right. Robert Valencia, good to have you with us. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Barbara.